to uh, hack RF1, but to put a pack, have it firmware. And so right there, comes from the Sharebrain store. For about $220 more than the actual hack RF1 costs. And uh, that is the GitHub page for the actual Havoc firmware, which is um, surprisingly difficult to find any information on how to actually install it, which is more or less what this video is about. And um, I think that's called the DFU tool, which is what they suggest to actually install it. I want to say it's on Linux, but they have a Windows version, and it doesn't work. As you can see, I'm trying to put the commands in there. And you can definitely read from it, because I'm getting those test bins out of there. But you can't write to it, it disconnects every time you try to upload that Havoc firmware. And that's the command line action. So all the good hacks is in the command line, you know? Files are in the computer. Just think of that command there. Too lazy to actually, you know, like type it in, so I just copy and paste everything. And there it is right there, kind of booted me out. Didn't really understand why it was doing that. I think that's DFU Tool 8, version 8, I think. I'm doing some more stuff in there. This segment's going on a little bit longer than I thought. Alright, this is how I actually did it. By downloading the firmware tool that's actually on the Portapack page, I think it's a GitHub page, and this is the tool that comes with it. And it's also a command line tool, but it, it's in a dot .bat, and I had a, a long drive the other day, and I realized that I could probably just edit the dot .bat to upload the Havoc firmware through Windows, and it worked beautifully. And that's me going through that. There's kind of a mess in there of me messing with this thing, but you pretty much just like have to put the firmware in a file with a firmware tool and then go to that dot bat and then edit it. There we go, that's the original one. And uh, it has the actual port of that firmware in there right there, that dot bin. That's what you gotta change. And that's out of there. This is a pre-edited one, and it's been changed that, uh, Havoc firmware dot bin dot something dot something or another. You just make sure you save that. And then run the dot bad as normal and should upload. I have it already on there, so I'm not actually going to do it again. And, uh, one other thing is, for whatever reason, it didn't actually, like, upload any of the, um, channel lists. Onto it, so just download the actual firmware from from the GitHub for the Havoc, and then go to the SD card portion of it, and then copy and paste that over to your SD card. That is a very very old spectrum analyzer. But you know what? It still comes in handy. And I'm setting it to, I would say, I don't know, there it is, 93.3 megahertz with an antenna of uh, unknown cut length. And that's me trying to check and see if the jammer is actually transmitting. And it's fucking not. There's no transmitting whatsoever going on there. This is, uh, let me plug it in real quick. You can actually see that it's got the firmware on there. You know, this isn't, this isn't a lie. This is actually how I did it. Got a little knight holding a Yagi antenna. And, uh, there's the menu for it. A little bit more colorful than the real one. I'm going to the transmitting settings, and I should go to the jammer, I think. I loaded in a range on that guy. For... 93 whatever I want to say the GSM range and it doesn't really work and I've tried this on a couple different things and different versions of um, different like things out of the frequency manager I can't seem to get anything to transmit out of it which you know that's, that's the price of free stuff free firmware the whole thing was very expensive there you go through it I think 
it's a GPRS channel. It really doesn't matter because like it's going through frequency range for jamming anyway, so like you should be able to see it on frequency analyzer pretty easily, even with incorrectly cut antennas and low transmitting power and what have you. Like you should be able to see a change in the waveform on that. Just not happening. I don't know what's wrong with it. I'll probably wait for the next firmware update and see if that fixes anything. No change in the waveform. I'm gonna turn the decibels down on that to see if I could find it. Still nothing. And it goes on like this for a second. The button's on claiming it's transmitting. Not getting anything out of it though. I think that's a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. That's it. Didn't work.